Hey everyone, I just read The Tombs of Atalan by Ursula K. Le Guin, and it was very different, but it was also very good. What's most interesting about these books to me is how whenever I have a question about the world or the plot, the author usually has an answer in the afterward. It's great. It's a book about a young woman who is made into the first priestess for a cult of nameless absent gods in an old crumbling temple in the middle of nowhere, and her encounter with a certain wizard from across the sea. The prose? I love how this book is an inversion of everything the first entry was. Instead of a young man surrounded by men, the protagonist is a young woman surrounded by women. Instead of taking place all across the earth, see, the setting is confined to the titular tombs. Instead of earning real power and it being liberating, the protagonist has useless power thrust upon her, and it is smothering. It was very different, but it was great. It was great to get a look at the Kargs and their culture given their framing as expansionist barbarians in the first book. The additions to the world building were fantastic and it really helps create the sense that this setting exists beyond what's depicted on the page. And this story is just wonderfully constructed, it doesn't miss a single beat. The cons? I don't think it's really needed, but this book doesn't really have a present villain. The closest it has is Kossel and Sparrowhawk himself for a fair bit of the book, and that's fine, but most of the story's central conflict is concerned with Tenar's internal struggle and it wasn't until the very end that I understood why. So while I was reading it, the novel sometimes felt like it was missing an antagonist. But like I said, in hindsight, I don't really think it's needed. Like the previous book, this novel is written in a pretty old-fashioned style with a lot of tell-don't-show outside of the big moments, and it takes a little while to get used to. And the book has a pretty lengthy denouement relative to its page count, so that might be something to keep in mind, although it wasn't a problem for me. Minor issues aside, this book was great. It is the best kind of sequel in that it builds on what came before rather than repeating it, and I think I might actually prefer it overall. There were some things that stood out to me as a bit weird while reading it, but like I said before, Le Guin addressed them all in the afterward and I found her arguments convincing. This is a great read, and if you're a fan of fantasy, especially more episodic, less serialised works, then absolutely give it a read if you haven't already. And I'm giving The Tombs of Atawan an S. What should I read next? Comment a suggestion down below. If you liked the review and want to see more, please like, subscribe, and share the video around. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.